Coming up on UMass Sports Insider, it was a winning start to 2011 on the gridiron. We'll look back at a season-opening victory against an in-state rival. Also, we take the show on the road with UMass Athletics as they promote the move to the bowl division around the region. And we see how the men's and women's hoops teams were there to lend a hand this summer after a natural disaster hit the birthplace of basketball. Bringing smiles to your faces. UMass Sports Insider, next. This is the UMass Sports Insider, brought to you by Coca-Cola. The athletic season is underway at UMass as the football team made the first game of its new era a successful one, taking it to Bay State rival Holy Cross last Thursday night. Now they have two weeks off to prepare for the home opener against Rhode Island. Hi there and welcome to the show. This week from the beautiful new football offices for the coaches, I'm Josh Maurer. We thank you so much for tuning in. And coming up in just a couple of moments, we'll look back at the big opening game victory with head coach Kevin Morris. After the announcement was made that the football program is moving up to the bowl subdivision and also playing its home games at Gillette Stadium starting next year, the athletic department decided to take the show on the road to promote the change. It was called the Together We're One Tour. Let's take a look and see what those events look like. When UMass people get together, it's alive, it's energetic, and again tonight, what a great crowd here at the UMass Club, and people are very excited about the move, but they're excited about UMass in general, but certainly football the topic tonight. We were able to promote UMass football in conjunction with the Alumni Association. Can you talk about how that all came together? Yeah, it came all together. Uh, thank you, people at the UMass Club um, put this together. You know, I'm sort of the founder of the UMass Club, and... Uh, you know, we've, we've always encouraged events like this where we combine the interest of the alumni in the Boston area with the club and with athletics, and tonight's a home run as far as I can see. Well, I came because I'm a, obviously I'm a UMass alum, and I'm pretty active with alumni affairs in general, and obviously I heard the coach was coming and the chancellor, so figured I took a good chance to support UMass, and uh, obviously our football team's headed in the right direction, so figured I would come and support UMass? We belong in the big leagues. We're a big league university and uh, as much as I enjoy our rivalries with uh, Maine and New Hampshire and Delaware, um, we're, we're a step up and we do things in a major league area in terms of our research, in terms of our endowment, in terms of everything that we do. So this is a natural step for the university. It's all positive. You know, in the end, this is what they want. You know, they want to be big time. UMass has always had a great reputation academically, and now just, you know, the, the football kind of puts it on the map with a face. It's a face with the name, and uh, the recruiting has gone fantastic this past spring. The buzz is out that UMass is going big time. Well, one of the players who's been a staple in the UMass starting lineup for his four years on the football team, he's a two-sport athlete with a great personality and a family legacy to live up to in athletics. With more, Big Y presents In the Bunker with Travis Trapuca. Uh, I'm Travis Trapuca. I'm a long snapper, senior from Mountain Lakes, New Jersey. I was recruited out of high school to play lacrosse. Um, came here, you know, loved the atmosphere. Um, you know, Coach Canella gave me a great opportunity, you know, to play. I was, I, I, I was wanted. And then I happened to, to get on the football team by accident. Uh, I was fooling around with a couple of my teammates in the springtime. And uh, Lance Overby, uh, our uh, academic advisor, who played football back here in the, in the 90s, saw me fooling around, thought I was pretty good. And uh, he had said that they had a, uh, some, some problems during the spring game with the long snapping, and uh, he wanted to see maybe if I could do it. So I had a one-on-one -on -one tryout with uh, Coach Brown at the time. I came out, took uh, several snaps, and uh, he was impressed. So he uh, gave me a call about halfway through the summer, said, uh, we got you on the roster and we want you to show up to camp. To my surprise, I've been doing it ever since. My dad was, was great in the fact that he didn't care what I did. He didn't really pressure me to, to play basketball. Was I jealous? Yes, I was always jealous. You know, it's, it, it's hard, you know, seeing how great your dad is and, and seeing how, how people respond to him. I mean, everywhere we go, there's people that go, oh, that's Kelly Chapuca. You know, they, they come up and want to shake his hand, get his autograph. My grandfather played football, so, you know, I, I have that going for me. He was an NFL quarterback. And the guys back in the 70s looked a little harder, a little tougher, well, you know, man's men, you know? And they had uh, a lot of facial hair, so decided to uh, take it back. My position is not known for mean guys, so, you know, I, I have to look the part, you know? 
Thanks, Travis. And as you can see, some interesting facial hair there for the UMass senior long snapper. Well, as we said, it was a great start to the season and the first night game ever hosted by Holy Cross. The Minutemen took down the Crusaders a couple of Thursdays ago. Let's take a look back at the highlights from the season opener. It's instant replay, UMass and Holy Cross. Two yards, all the Minutemen need for the first score tonight. The high backs in the tight end, up and over. He does it all. They'll line him up all over the field, this time as a fullback. And a little pooch kick and hustling down there, unable to pull it in, though. Fess, wow, perfectly executed up until the point of the grab. Pooch set up top, looking the other way, though, is the quarterback, Pagel, and he connects with Jewel Misty. Fires it in there, good coverage, but it didn't matter. Touchdown, UMass. Touchdown. Here comes Holy Cross. Fess. All on the ground, not the way you want it to start. And coming up with it after the big lick. At Saintville. And a little bit of sloppiness, it seems, here early, not just in the first game, but this last season. In the football championship level. How about the open field? Step up, pop, ball is stripped and on the ground. Minutemen say they have it. On third down, not what you wanted to see if you're a Crusader fan. Defense for Holy Cross has done an outstanding job against this high-powered offense. But here comes Hernandez running right down through the middle of them on a second down and 15. And now both he and tight end, Iguanagu, in the backfield. The pass, though, is Pagel, and he hits Hernandez. A nice strike on the wheel route. The fullback and fake the pitch and Julian Talley. They got sneaky good hands for a big dude. Talley's in there. Tyler Holmes, the linebacker. How about that? We didn't call his name much as a linebacker tonight, as expected, but sealing the deal perhaps here with 49 seconds. Well, a great night for UMass up at Holy Cross under the lights on Thursday. Off of that night, we end up with five blue shirts, which is our MVPs for the game. And let's hit these guys up and talk a little bit about the game. First off is Ed St. Bill. Well, you know, first of all, I just want to do whatever I could to help out the team. And, you know, with the fumble and the fumble recovery, I put my team in a great position to get some points on the board, so I'm proud about that. Another familiar face to the blue jersey. Having another great start to your season, John. 150 yards rushing and a great night overall. Tell us a little bit about the game and your blue jersey, John. First of all, I couldn't have done it without my linemen. They, uh, they, uh, they came out and played well, and uh, receivers blocking downfield. And uh, I think we uh, played well in all three phases, special teams, defense, and offense. Let's talk to the offensive lineman help there. And Josh Samuda. Josh, there's a nice blue for you. Great night for you. Let's go. Um, we had a, a mindset, came out, the whole o line played aggressively, and we had a good, good night. Help block for John Hernandez. Let's move over to the defensive side of the ball. And let's talk to Brandon Potvin. Uh, feels real good to be in the blue, especially coming out first game 3-4 defense. Uh, we really got after it. Felt good to be out there with the guys, and I'm glad I got the blue, helped my team get the victory. Number 46, linebacker from Brookline, Chad Hunt. Chad, tell us about your blue day. There was a third and long, they threw a screen and just uh, stopping them, stopping them on third and long, forcing the field goal, which they actually missed, so that was a big play for us. Absolutely, great play by Chad, great play by all these guys in the blue, and again, the more blue we have here at UMass, you know we're having a great night, great opening. Congratulations, men. Thanks, Coach, and as you can see, there were some big plays in that win at Holy Cross, so we're going to send it back to Coach Morris now to break down some of the key moments from the game in the film room. It's time for Coach Morris and Coach Chalk Talk. Coach? Well, thank you, Josh. Well, let's get to the highlights from the Holy Cross game. Thursday night crowd in Worcester, first night game ever over there at Fit and Field. Our guys really stepped up and played. Let's look at some of those highlights. Well, let's take a look at the opening kickoff of the second half where we get a great turnover by Ed Sainville. He's going to come down and really push this hash the whole way and come inside the hash down in what we call the war zone. Now, the man trying to block him is his center. So if you follow these two guys down, the center is going to drop and try to pivot and turn on Eddie. Eddie's going to beat him, what we call a butt side avoid, and get all the way to the ball carrier. So here comes Ed, Ed straight down the hash. The center's trying to work towards him. Now right at this point, Ed's going to shake him and go inside, right there on the 32-yard line. Beats him inside, and there's a clear gap right to the finish. See the center chasing him. Ed on the big hit on the, on the run, on the returner right there. Let's go to a blue shirt, uh, two blue shirts on defense. One is Brandon Popkin right here. Brandon's going to make the big hit on the quarterback. 
on this particular third down play late in the game to stop the drive. He's going to get through the A-gap there, but he's going to help because Perry McIntyre is going to come on the blitz, cause confusion. Here's a three-man pass rush on the quarterback. We're going to get an intentional grounding call on number seven, the quarterback, because he's got nowhere to go with it. Okay, let's go over to the offensive side of the ball, check out a couple more blue shirt players. One of John in is the tailback, and another would be Josh Samuda at left guard. You're going to see Josh in this play. This play is designed to come this way initially, and then Emil Iguanago, our tight end, is going to come back here on the backside and block here. Hernandez is going to bend the ball all the way back around and take it up the side, but he's going to get great help. It's going to bend back now to the right side. Great job by Iguanagu coming back as he works backside to pick up the edge player. Joe Misty number four is the wide receiver blocking the corner up top and here goes Hernandez. And You're not going to tackle Hernandez one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. So watch Josh Samuda, that's him right there. Blue shirt player, boom, that's a, that's a knockdown. His guy is on the ground and he's going to hustle downfield. Great job by the blue shirts, great, shirt, all, great play all the way around. Nice 15-yard gain. Thanks, Coach. We hope you learned something. We'll do that each week here on UMass Sports Insider. Time for us to step aside for the first time, but don't go away. When we come back, we're going to turn our attention to the basketball programs and take a look back at what they did to support some tornado relief efforts in Springfield this past summer. Why, Chefy Big Why? How about our bigger, sweeter drinks? And our huge super bird rotisserie chickens. We have a word for the other store's birds. Appetizers. <laughs> there are lots of fish departments in the sea. But ours has U.S. grade A seafood. Right, pal? And we make your fish and chips to order. The biggest reason to shop here. We have the best sales week after week. Only the best for your family. From ours. The UMass Amherst Alumni Association is over 225,000 alumni strong. Our vibrant community participates in professional development programs, alumni clubs, athletic, and other events around the globe. Explore the traditions, resources, and opportunities that are your UMass Amherst Alumni Association. Get connected today. You are! You are! Oh, yeah. host CAA rival Rhode Island in the home opener on Saturday, September 17th with post-game fireworks to follow. 6.9 is a breakthrough. 6.9 is a physics lesson. 6.9 is the outer limit. 6.9 is an explosion. Makes this the lightest ever. Watching the UMass Sports Insider. Welcome back. We've moved outside for this portion of the show so you can see the W.E.B. Du Bois Library, which is right behind me right now. It's our flashback time, and it was just about one year ago that one of UMass's greatest athletes ever made a long-awaited return to campus and was inducted into the Athletics Hall of Fame. Let's take a look back. September 10th, 2010, Marcus Camby's Hall of Fame induction. It's a great honor. I mean, I'm going in with a great, great class. I'm going to be among my idol, Dr. J. Coach Cal is in there. Lou Rowe was in there. So it's, a, it's an extreme honor, and I'm happy uh, a lot of people came out to see it. They deserve to be in before I am in anything. They did it all. Those are the guys on the court. Camby may have been the guy on the court for another school if it wasn't for a phone call in the early 1990s. 
And she called and said, I have a seven-footer who's a special kid and he's going to be a pro. And to myself, I'm saying, sure you do. You know, you kind of get every a kooky call like that every once in a while. And I'm to myself, you know, an hour away, there's no way I don't know about this kid. If anybody knows me, I'm a big loyalty guy. And, you know, they were one of the first schools to really recruit me hard. And when it came down to make my decision, they were the first people I called and got in touch with. So it was like a no-brainer. I said, Marcus, how old are you? He said, 37. You know how old I am then? I didn't want to ask. Jim, don't ask. <laughs> Sticking with the basketball theme, let's take you back to early June when a tornado ripped right through the heart of downtown Springfield, the birthplace of basketball and also the birthplace of UMass basketball head coach Derek Kellogg. In the aftermath of the disaster, the Minute Men and Minute Women teams were quick to lend a hand. As CBS 3 Springfield's Ezra Broder explains, UMass Catering presents Serving the Community. The sports world isn't immune to disasters. Just ask Derek Kellogg, whose hometown of Springfield was ravaged by tornadoes in June. That's why he and some of the Minutemen were there shortly after the disaster, visiting the shelter at the Mass Mutual Center. The Hoops team showed off some of their skills for kids and adults. The guys also signed autographs and took pictures. The players say even if they didn't personally lose their homes, they still feel the need to help out. Any little thing that we could do to kind of brighten up the day of a, of a young person or even some adults here is, is worth, uh, it's really worth the price of gold to see some smiles on those kids' faces. I think they need this type of stuff, especially going through this tornado and stuff. They need a little bit of joy and happiness of seeing somebody. I mean, it helps for us to come give them some entertainment for a little while, you know. The very next day, members of the Minute Women's squad paid a visit to the shelter. They signed autographs for the kids there and just spent time with them. A lot of the ladies say it was as rewarding for them as it was for the kids. Head coach Sharon Dolly is from the Bay State and says you just don't expect disasters like this to happen here. I grew up in Mass and, and never experienced anything like that. And uh, in, you know, it's like anything else when it hits home. It just, uh, it's a good reality check. And, um, you know, it's it, after you get past the shock, you just look around and you're like, you know, these people need help. Just to know that some of these families got hurt was just, you know, really shocking to me. And it really touched my heart. I just couldn't believe it. I was really upset. Very upset. Just because, you know, like, it's just shocking. You know, nobody can really, if you don't have tornadoes, you can't really, you don't know how to prepare for it. For UMass Sports Insider, I'm Ezra Broder. The shelter at the Mass Mutual Center remained open for several weeks, but it's now back to hosting sporting events, including basketball contests. In fact, the Minutemen will play Sienna in December at the Mass Mutual Center. Time for us to step aside. Don't go away. When we come back, we're going to take you out onto the practice field with another UMass team. It's the Women's Soccer Squad, and they'll show you what they do to get prepared for a match. Don't go away. I came to UMass for an education. What I received was a world full of experiences. My broad coursework here has helped me to get exposure to many different areas of civil engineering. What excited me about UMass is that they're really invested in the sciences. For me, UMass Amherst has been all about community, whether as a peer leader for Commonwealth Honors College students or as a volunteer big brother. Eisenberg transformed the way I think about my career. It encouraged me to find my passion and then pushed me to pursue it. Why shop at Big Y? Because we stand behind our quality. Literally. <laughs> because my beef is all natural Angus from the USA. My strawberries are all Driscoll's. And I grind our beef fresh all day long. We have the best sales week after week. And everything's guaranteed fresh. Fresh. Fresh as one of these. Only the best for your family. From ours. Amherst Alumni Association provides resources for alumni and students like campus to career programs, online tools, scholarships and mentoring opportunities that prepare students for, for life, life after, after graduation. graduation. The Alumni Association sponsors student traditions and athletic events. Make connections at social, professional, and cultural alumni events across the country. You are! You are! You are!
Courtney Robinson, defensive back, kick returner. I played at UMass 2006 to uh, 2009. I never forget the cold weather being from Florida. Uh, a lot of the playoff games against the UNHs, uh, you know, Montana. Um, a lot of the games, you know, that were big games. And just to see the program, you know, expanding is, you know, good for myself, the players, and then also, you know, the alumni that, you know, help, you know, create this path. Uh, it just shows that, you know, a lot of my hard work and a lot of the guys that I played with and even uh, the guys before me and the hard work that everybody's put in, you know, it's paying off. Since UMass, um, you know, graduated from UMass and uh, started out in the NFL with Philadelphia. But, um, well, you know, the lockout and everything that's going on, I'm playing in uh, the CFL this year, you know, with hopes of going back to the NFL the following year. Courtney Robinson was one of the greatest kick returners in program history. In fact, he still ranks first all-time in kickoff return yardage. He's hoping to catch on with another professional team in 2011. Well, in this show, we try to give you a look inside all the UMass athletic teams, and one that's off to a great start in 2011 is women's soccer. Last week against Elon, the Minute Women got these two goals from Cincinnati transfer Julie Morrissey. The second one snapping a 1-1 tie with just eight minutes remaining and giving the Minute Women an undefeated record through three matches at 2-0-1. That leads us into this week's X's and O's segment where we take you onto the practice field with head coach Ed Matz. Let's see what the men and women's soccer team does as they get prepared for a match. Coach Matz? In a couple minutes I'm going to go out and do an offensive walkthrough. It's a typical practice that we run the day before a game. Um, and what we're trying to do is, is take our offense and match it up uh, um, against the defensive scheme that the other team is playing and uh, try to uh, find ways that we can exploit their, uh, their system and find gaps in the system. Same thing, except this time, Jen, you take a run, take a step, slide it down in for D, and everybody goes forward, like we did yesterday, okay? Where you slide in, okay? All right? Go around me, then forward. Around me, then forward. All right, good. There you go. Come forward. Go, CC, go! CC, yep. CC, you're still going through, though. Kelsey. Give the ball into D, so you're trying to find D's feet, okay? D's dropping it back into CC somewhere in here, okay? Mo, are you going through those, okay? All right, no, Kelsey, dribble, dribble forward. All right, go ahead, come on, CC, call for it. It's gotta be harder, gotta be harder. All right, again, CC, harder balls. All right, so you're getting the ball, all right, right here, all right? So I'm going this way, okay? Back in, back in, flick it in. Get that in, CC, hit it. Take a touch and have it, take a touch and have it. Have it, have it. All right, thanks coach. It's our final break in the program. We're stepping aside, but when we come back, we'll find out what the first job was for some of our UMass men's and women's athletes. We'll see what kind of responsibility they learned back when they were younger. Don't go away. 6.9 is a breakthrough. 6.9 is a physics lesson. 6.9 is the outer limit. 6.9 is an explosion. Uh oh, you just got faster. 6.9 is ounces, and that makes this the lightest ever. I came to UMass for an education. What I received was a world full of experiences. My broad coursework here has helped me to get exposure to many different areas of civil engineering. What excited me about UMass is that they're really invested in the sciences. For me, UMass Amherst has been all about community, whether as a peer leader for Commonwealth Honors College students or as a volunteer big brother. Eisenberg transformed the way I think about my career. It encouraged me to find my passion and then pushed me to pursue it. Watching the UMass Sports Insider.
We're back on UMass Sports Insider. At the end of the program each week, we ask some of our athletes some offbeat questions to give you a chance to get to know their personality off the field. Parents will tell you, part of becoming a responsible adult is getting and holding a job as a youngster. So this week, we asked some of our Minute Men and Minute Women, what's the first job you ever had? Let's check out and see what they said. It's our Hookie Lao letter side. I was a busboy at CeCe's Pizza. You know, they had me start out in the kitchen. You know, I was washing dishes. You know, I, it was kind of a dirty job. You really don't realize how hard those people work, you know, back in the, in the restaurants, you know. My first job, I worked at a country club in my hometown. I was just like waitressing, basically. It was really easy. A lot of fancy guys coming in and it playing, a- playing 18 holes. Yeah, they're actually really stuck up, which I didn't really like. Well, I actually uh, never had a job, you know, just haven't gone through my mind yet to get a job. Actually, this summer I was working as a painter. At, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Can you paint? No, not that good. <laughs> but I tried. My first job, I was a swim instructor for little kids, teaching them how three year olds how to swim. That was my first job. It's the first pizza ever made in my life, all right? So I put I put some marinara sauce on it, some banana peppers. That's it. So uh, this 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 little old lady comes over, grabs grabs my pizza I just made. I'm like, actually not, and it was too late. She had the pizza, was eating it. She goes, Who made this pizza? This pizza is so good. I'm like, oh, I mean, yeah, that's me. Did it teach you about responsibility? Yeah, I it was terrible. You had to carry the huge trays. It wasn't fun at all. You never dropped the tray, did you? I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, did your mom ever yell at you like when you were in middle school or high school, get a job? Yes, a lot of times in high school. So then uh, I'll go online, you know, fill out a quick little application, but it never really usually got sent. Painting what? Like painting walls or painting portraits? No, no, uh, like walls, like houses. Oh. Yeah. Because <laughs> if you were painting portraits, that'd be pretty impressive. Yeah, I don't think I would get a job as that, but... Maybe watercolor? Yeah, maybe. Are you a swimming expert? I'm not an expert. I'm not very good at swimming. I won't drown, but um, I get tired really. So they entrusted three-year-olds to you? It was the shallow end. <laughs> so not only did you not get fired, you created a whole new sl- a pizza. A whole new pizza. That was the end of you at the country club? Yes, it was. I quit after that. Oh. It was not good. Somebody watching the show may want to hire you. Maybe, you know. I'm looking for jobs, so anyone want to hire me, I'm available, and I will not disappoint. Thanks, guys. That's our Hookie Lao letter side. Before we go, it's time to take a look at what's coming up for UMass Athletics. It's our weekly look at the week ahead. With the football team off this week, there's still a pair of games on campus this weekend. First, the defending Atlantic 10 field hockey team plays its home opener. They host Harvard Saturday at 1 p.m. at Garber Field and also celebrate the 30-year anniversary of the team's 1981 Final Four appearance. We showed you earlier the women's soccer team in our X's and O's segment. Sunday, they look to continue a strong start as they host in-state rival Boston University at 1 p.m. at Rudd Field. That'll do it for us this week. We thank you so much for tuning in and hope you'll be back with us next week for another edition of UMass Sports Insider. Until then, have a great weekend. The UMass Sports Insider, brought to you by Coca-Cola, Big Y World Class Markets, Adidas, UMass Catering, the UMass Alumni Association, the Hookie Lao, and UMassAthletics.com.